Alright, fuckers, welcome back to Son of Scotland 90 with the Football Manager 2017 Old Farmer 5 We're just about to kick off the start of Season 2. First league game of the season is going to be the reigning champion Celtic taking on newly promoted Dundee United who won the Scottish Championship last year. So it's champions versus champions. But just before we uh, get into that, well, we've also got Rangers taking on Dundee on Sunday tomorrow which we'll be having this episode too. So it's... Like Glasgow versus Dundee, double header really. Who's battle of the cities, Glasgow and Dundee? But uh, before we do that, we'll just go and check where we were last time out. So um, have a look at the Celtics fixtures since then. Um, obviously we dismantled TNS in the Champions League qualifying stages. Look at that, nineteen one on aggregate. Absolutely amazing. That eleven nil home victory. I mean, TNS. They're no, not the weakest team. You know, so for us to beat them 11-0 is pretty incredible. There's um, a lot shittier teams than them. And uh, we're not the strongest team either. So just imagine if the weakest team came up against like a Real Madrid or something. Could have been about fucking 45-0. But who knows. We then defeated Celtic under 20s. Just in a quick friendly 4-1. And then we were drawn against Panathinaikos in the qualifying uh, qualifying stage three. It was a tough tie, but we managed to come out four two winners at home. Albeit Panathinaikos did get two away goals, so all they need is a two 0 win, three one win at home and in, in Greece, and uh, they'll be going through over us. But hopefully that won't happen. I don't know. We might actually play that Panathinaikos game just because um, it might it might be a tough game. Although we might stroll it, we might even win again. So who knows? But. I was definitely happy with 4 2, but I definitely wouldn't say the tie is over. So, we're about to start our match against Dundee United. And we'll see how Rangers got on. Last time we were with Rangers, I believe. I believe it was. There yeah, we see. So, we defeated Cork City there. 5 1 in aggregate in the first uh, round. In the second round, we got Young Boys. They were actually favourites to go through, but we came out 5 1 aggregate winners over Young Boys, which I was very happy with. Then we come up against this team, KUPS. I think they're from Finland. They're definitely not as good as Young Boys, but um, see, we only won 1 0, although it was a good away win from home. So I don't know if we'll bother playing the third. I think we should have enough to beat them at home. And then obviously we'll be into the playoff uh, stage. And we'll definitely play them. Whoever we get. And we'll have a quick look at Aberdeen, who are also in Europe. They're doing pretty well, may I add. Um, let's see, schedule. So you can see, <laughs> nice 10-1 win over St. Julia. Whoever the fuck they are, I've never heard of them in my life. Then they got, not as comfortable, but they managed to get a 3-2 free, free aggregate win over this Osa Sheik team. Uh, they actually kind of struggled with them quite a lot. And then they got a 3-0 win over Soot Fagarimgim, or whatever the fuck they are called. So um, it definitely looks like Aberdeen are going to be into the playoff stages of the Europa League and they'll be kicking off their Premier League campaign tomorrow with an away trip to uh, Tynecastle against Hearts. And the last team in Europe, the team that nobody expected to do well, it is Air United. Now let's have a quick look at how they are doing. So you see, come in at the second round and they managed to get a 2-1 win. I got a win over Trench and couldn't believe it. I was delighted. I mean, every little helps. So, they got a win. They got through to the next round. It helps the coefficient. Sadly, they drew Spartak Moscow. Um, you'd probably expect Spartak Moscow to beat any of the Scottish teams, maybe apart from Celtic. So, he, But I think Spartak Moscow would definitely be favourites against Rangers and Aberdeen. So, for Ayr to, to come up against one of the better teams in the qualifying stages was uh, unlucky for them. And you can see, away from home, they got beat 3-0. I highly doubt they'll be able to turn it around in the return leg, but who knows, and then uh, next week they kick off their championship campaign against Dunfermline. So, um, things looking alright, and it might look as if uh, we may have three teams in Europe. I definitely don't think Ayr's going to be there, but if, as long as the luck of the draw goes our way, I see no reason why we will not have Celtic, Rangers and Aberdeen in Europe. In the... Uh, whatever you'd call it, the real fucking, the real Europe, you know what I mean? <laughs> the actual uh, group stage, so. Anyway, first game of the season, taking on Dundee United. Um, we cannot play Sumifich, he's actually injured, unfortunately, so 
I'm going to have to take him out. And also Sivachenko, who has been playing at left back because of an injury to Tierney. Um, we don't want you playing there, mate. So, Oh, fuck. Just before we get into this, I also forgot there's been some transfers. How the fuck can I forget about the transfers, man? And um, let's see who has left Celtic Park. So you can see we've uh, brought in... Is that for last year or this year? It's for last year. Uh, we brought in Joe Robles, what you knew about last episode. He will be an upgrade on both Gordon and Bain. And players who have left, got a shitload of young players that were just never going to make it. They left on free. We've got a load of loan players also that, you know, have went out, tried to get them an experience. We also sell Derek Boyata. Got him for 1.1 million for him. I thought that was a decent offer. Uh, I mean, he's not a bad defender, but he was like my fifth choice. So... You know, 1.1 million from a fifth choice. I'm not going to complain about that. And he was 26. So, I mean, if he was younger, I would have kept him. But not that 26 is old, but I think he was getting to the stage where he's, he's as good as he's going to get. And um, I just didn't really see feel the need to keep him around. Gary McKay-Stevens um, sold him for 450k. He wanted out. Um, I, I wouldn't mind keeping him, but he was really only going to be a rotation type player. He wanted more than that. He wanted first team fit, but so sold him QPR for 450. And then Emilio Isaguri, he also wasn't really happy about, he was never going to be a first choice. And then we also signed that young guy, what's his name? Fucking let me check, I forget. Tony Gallagher. He's predicted to be another wonder kid just like Kieran Tierney, so he was probably going to, you know, take over the role of um, second in command left back whatever you want to call it second choice left back so really Issa Gouri's career was not going to he's not going to get more game time at Celtic he went for 300k and then we've just loaned out a bunch of people so there you can see about that and then we will check with Angels but let's have a, we're going to have a quick look at who the other teams of who the other big boys of the league have um, brought in Aberdeen you can see they've, they've actually made some good signings they brought in Liam Polwell for Inferness they've got Liam Henderson and uh, the, the man I was talking about, Tony Gallagher, we've loaned him out, but he is definitely one for the future. Then they brought in Ryan Gold on loan, a great signing for them, and Casey Palmer from Chelsea. So um, Aberdeen have definitely made good signings. I've not really... Neil Alexander retired, he wasn't their first choice anyway, so... None of these players really are going to... None of these players are really in their first team anyway, so... Or, uh, albeit maybe they would have liked to have kept Story, maybe Stockley, but... I don't think they'll be too disappointed, they'll be definitely happy with the lone players that they managed to bring in. See Dundee United coming up, brought in a few signings, will it be enough to keep them in the Premier League? I don't know. We did buy uh, Jamie Robson off them though, so that may weaken them a little bit. I think Dundee United may have to make a few more signings if they are to um, stay in the league. Hamilton, we have bought two players off with Angels, Michael Devlin and fuck, Ali Crawford. So, I mean, will they struggle losing two of the key players? They may do. Also lost uh, Giannis Skondaras to heart, so it's another big loss for them. So, Hamilton may struggle this year, and I wouldn't be surprised if they finish in the bottom half. Then they might be in a relegation fight, who actually knows. But Hearts have brought in Tell Walker Peters on loan. Scounder ass from Hamilton and this guy here on loan for Nottingham Forest. Who have they got rid of? Nobody of note really. Aaron Hughes is retired. Rafita's retired. Paul Gallagher's retired. Bunch of jobbers here that don't really matter. Liam Smith on loan. And they've uh, sold Christian Nowak and Gavin Riley. So there you go. Hibernian. Just let go a bunch of jobbers again. And a bunch of other people here that Nobody really knows. And um, they've brought in nobody of real note. So Hibernian not really improved their team much. Kilmarnock, not done a lot. Mullerwell, hmm, brought in a few players, but nobody, nobody great. <laughs> Although they did sell Lewis Moult to us for, uh, for Rangers for 1.4 million. Keith Lastly and Stevie Hamill, two of the key players, have uh, retired. They got rid of Stephen Pearson on a free... I think this could be a year where Merlewell struggle, and I think they've got to be one of the favourites, I believe, for relegation. Definitely losing the top goal scorer is going to fuck them up big time. Uh, Partick Thistle had a great season last season. Can they do it again? Who knows? Haven't really lost any of their key players, so I mean, I don't see why not. They've brought in a few players on loan. 
and a few on a free transfer, so maybe they can do something. And then you see this range, this is the place we brought in Matthew Knox for Livingston, Hamilton, uh, Devlin and Crawford for Hamilton, Lewis Malt breaking the 1 million barrier there, 1.4 cost us from Motherwell, and uh, Jamie Robson as backup for Lee Wallace, because we only had one left back, so we definitely need it. another one, and look at the long list on low knees, so it's a sign of the Rangers. Is that the last team in the league? And then finally you've got St. Johnston who have um, not really been doing much. They have got rid of Gray and Cummins to QPR. Will they struggle without him? Who knows? They've got in some loans of uh, Scott Allen and Josh Windass as well. So, uh, good for St. Johnston. And uh, just before we get into this, we'll have a quick look at the um, season preview. So you see, Celtic are predicted to win the league, Rangers second, Aberdeen third, got Hearts fourth, St Johnston fifth, Hibernian sixth, Partick Thistle seventh, Dundee eighth, Dundee United ninth, Mullerwell tenth, Al Al Hamilton eleventh and Kilmarnock twelfth. Um, so they reckon Kilmarnock are going to finish last, um, well to be honest we've all got Kilmarnock, Hamilton and Mullerwell all joint. Hamilton, I think they've got a better team than most, but losing the two key players, that is going to affect them big time, obviously. But Mollywell losing their top goal scorer is going to affect them as well. So, uh, yeah, I'd definitely say it's one of these three, Mollywell, Hamilton or Kilmarnock. I think the others are just too good, and I think, I don't know, Dundee United. I know Hibernian's got too good a team to go down, but Dundee United, I'm not sure how they'll get on. I suppose there's only one way to um, find out, and that is play the season. See, there's some new managers, Craig Lafine of Hearts, he's took over as the man, no longer, I don't know if, it, he might still be the director, but he's actually the manager now, so, good for them, or whatever, and then see Paul Heger, he's came in, he's replaced Neil Lennon as manager of Hibs, and um, yeah, that's it basically, so let's get stuck in now, first game of the season, surprised at the full, the, um, Alright, so this looks a bit like the team we're going to be going with. Um, having to play Sivachenko at left back, unfortunately, but has to be done with Keon Tierney injured at the moment. <laughs> Maybe get a place for some what someone on the bench. Simifitch is injured, he won't be able to make it. We've got Chris Commons. We've got I think we'll she we'll play Sheesh she on the thing, he's got the most uh, match sharpness. So there you go, that's gonna be our team. First game of the season, Robles, Gamboa, Lustig, Ambrose, Sivachenko, Brown, Benton, Sinclair, Rodrix, Roberts and Dembele. It's not the best uh, back four, Lustig out of position, Sivachenko out of position, but I'm comfortable with it. I mean, we've got three injuries at the moment, Tierney, Sunific and Colo Turi, which is never good. Maybe actually, I'm a bit disappointed actually I loaned out Tony Gallagher, I think I should have kept him now. Only got one left back. At the club, and I might recall him from alone actually. Should we recall him from alone? Let me know. I mean, obviously, he'll probably he will improve, he'll uh, get better if he's getting first team fit bar, but at the, at, as it stands at the moment, we don't really have a backup. No one can really play left back. Sivachenko can kind of fit in there a wee bit, but he's not, it's not his natural position. So at the moment, all I've got is Keon Tierney, and he does seem to get injured from time to time. So, um, I don't know, should we recall Tony Gallagher? I think I might, you know. I think I might. I can't remember who we loaned him out. Oh, Aberdeen, yeah, they won't be too happy, will they? Fuck them. <laughs> we, need, we need them more than they do. Or maybe we'd not even him. Maybe we could just, I don't know, recall an our left back. Or maybe check our under-20 team and see if there's a left back that we could call up. Just for um, you know, situations like this where Tierney is unavailable due to injury, suspension or... Anything else like that. And we are massive favourites for this match. 1-6 to six on. The draw is 5-1. to one. Dundee United 10-1. Um, key players are going to be Moussa Dembele and Cammy Bell. Cammy Bell, former Rangers goalkeeper. I'm pretty sure we'll be buying in a few goals against him today. Um... Prediction here from John McCormick from the Scotsman.com. He's predicting a 1-0 win. I think we'll be getting a bigger win than that. Um, Billy has my full backing. Yep, he's in charge. If he wants to list a player, he can. 
James McLean. It was definitely a player I think could be leaving us. I mean, if we get the right offer for him anywhere, if I can kind of get the money back we spent on him, I'll definitely sell him. Or maybe we should give him a few games to try and try him. I don't know. Just it's not. He's not been the the best signing for us. And he's never going to be starting over Scott Sinclair, really, is he? So, I don't know, maybe we should look to improve the team elsewhere. So we go, we're going to go for control, fluid. Or should we go attacking, first game of the season? We're going to go attacking and um, set an example. Smash them about 10 now and show them why we are the league champions. There you go, there's the... Opening ceremony, blah blah blah. Whether it's a champion, Scott Premier League champions against the Championship champions, who's going to win, man? What an even match this is! Green versus orange. It's like a fucking dinosaur taking on a bloody uh, a mouse. You know what I mean? It's going to be one way traffic. Going to be complete domination, or so you'd like to think. Anyway, throw in Elion Sivachenko, throws it to Dembele, big Musa there to Sinclair to bit edge of the box. Low footed shot man, right into the corner and the keeper, Cammy Bell, no chance with that one. Two minutes in, it's 1-0 already. Bitten's first goal of the season and uh, we did not take long to get off to a great start, did we? Scott Sinclair there with the assist. Uh, at Rugby Park, Kamarnik are falling a goal behind to St Johnston. Mullerwell take the lead at Fur Park against the Bellany and it's Musa Dembele here. It's another shot though this time. Cammy Bell makes the save and clutches it into his body. Still 1-0 there in 5 minutes gone. 3 goals already though in the Scottish Premier League. So lots of goals so far. Match stats. Just the 2 shots from us. Dundee United having 1 shot but not troubling the keeper. And then you can see goals in every game so far apart from the Hamilton and Partick Thistle. So uh, the two promoted teams Dundee United and Hibernian not having a great start to the Premier League here. Both falling goals a goal behind in the first uh, 6 minutes of their respective games. Cammy Bell with a big punt up. Tries to find Murray but it's taken down. Now it's forward to Dembele. Dembele's on his own. He's going to have to go. He's just went past the black man. It's Dembele. It's, oh, it's no. I thought it was in. Don't I don't quite know what happened there. I think Cammy Bell maybe saved it onto the post or onto the bar. It looked like he was beat. He was stuck there like a fucking duck out of water, man. Just, well, ducks can come out of water. Like a fish out of water, just... Looking like a nugget standing in the middle of his box, and then uh, the ball just seemed to roll back into his arm. So, amazing stuff there. Dembele will be upset. He was basically one on one there. I think he should have scored. Definitely should have done better, but he didn't. Sivachenko now in that left back position has been caught offside. He's been nine shots to one. We're in complete control, dominating performance so far, but only one goal we lead, so uh, Kilmarnock, uh, not Kilmarnock, Dundee United definitely still in the game. It's not over yet, that is for sure. Still no goals uh, since the opening burst, so since those three goals early on, there's been nothing left in the league, so maybe the teams have tightened up, I don't know. 38 minutes gone, 39, not quite a lot happening, it's been a quiet first half, got two Celtic players on yellow cards, Scott Sinclair and Mikel Lustig, don't want to get a sending off here in the first game of the season, surely not, uh, we'd look to take Lustig off but we don't really have any cover at the moment, <laughs> so many injuries to our defenders. Fucking first half's dragging in and not a lot's happening. And there you go, there is the end of the uh, first half, and we'll just tell them that they're playing well. There we go, and all yellow card there. <laughs> Cam, things are going well, but I know you're capable of even better. And then uh, we'll kick off with the second half. I think we'll just control the game now. We don't want to go too attacking. We're we're winning one now. It would be stupid just to completely go and try and get another goal that we don't necessarily need. So we'll try and go control. Be wary of the counter attack. We also need to be wary not to get a man sent off there. Like two of the four defenders on yellow cards. 
match stats. Dundee ended up half had a second shot, but didn't look like it came to anything decent. Well, the flood first Dundee United man to go in the book, and it's going to be a corner from Roberts whipped in. Then bit Ambrose will pack back to Roberts. Onto Rodrick at the end of the box, crossed it. Oh, it's a foul. William Enga Gulley there's been he's brought down somebody. I think he brought down Bitten or Rodrick was it? And it's going to be a penalty here to Celtic. And is he going to be receiving a card though? Referee walks over slowly. Is he going to produce it? Referee, yellow card just there, so you really need to be careful for the rest of the game. And here we go, it's going to be big. Scott Sinclair. He's the top goal scorer for Celtic so far this season, and he makes no doubt about it. He puts it in 2 0, and that should be the game over. That's his ninth goal of the season. Celtic now move up to first position in the league, so uh, that tells me that there's been a goal elsewhere. Yeah, so St Johnson also appear to be winning by two goals to nil now. Sinclair with a corner. Whipped in, headed away. Yeah, St Johnson also 2 0 up. So we've leaked from St Johnson. We're back to the top of the league where we belong. Savachenko to Brown, Brown to Bitten, Bitten to Lustig, Lustig through to Roberts, and Roberts turn at the defence and run, oh no he's tried to but he's lost the ball, and now Dundee United looking to try to clear the lines, try and get, relieve some of this pressure, straight up though, straight to Lustig, back to Tom Roderick. He plays Dembele, Dembele trying to create space for himself, Dembele, oh he gets Scott Sinclair free at the back, oh, Cammy Bell though, good save there, tipping it onto the post, Scott Sinclair though probably feels he should have done better, maybe he feels he should have scored, I think he should have scored, but he's got a chance to make up for it with this delivery of the corner kick back post, it's Rogic, oh it's took a bunch of deflections but it's finally went in, I think Tom Rogic is going to be given the goal, it's his first goal of the season. Dundee United are just falling apart early on in this second half and scoring could end up anything at this rate, could be 5 6 nil. I think we'll make a substitution though. Who do we want to take off? Dembele's not got a goal yet, we'll, we'll, um, I think we'll take Dembele off. Ah, who do we... We'll bring on Lee Griffiths, give him a chance. Who else is ready to come on? We could bring on Armstrong, Forrest, give Ryan Christie a chance. I don't know. Yeah, I think we'll leave Armstrong out. He's at 86. Um, James McLean, we'll bring him on for Scott Sinclair since he's booked. I think we'll make our last sub already. Yeah, why not? We'll, bring, we'll give Ryan Christie a chance. Fuck it, why not? Ryan Christie can come on for uh, Tom Roderick, I think. Yeah, it's silly to make all three substitutions so early in case, I don't know, we get an injury, but we're 3-0 up. Not really going to matter, is it? You know, a good save there for Cammy Bell. Twenty-two minutes to go. Could Dund have Dundee got anything left? If they do, man, they need to start showing it. They need to start producing it now. It's Blair Spittle down the wing, cross it in. Oh, and it's a goal. Willow Flood. How the hell did that cross find Willow? Look at Willow Flood there, man. Probably about thirty, and he looks about sixty-seven in this picture. But anyway, Willow Flood getting a goal back for Dundee United. I'm sure it only proved to be a constellation, but. Nonetheless, they're done the United getting their first goal back in the Premier League. Ball out to Roberts. Can we make it four? Get our free goal advantage back? No, McLean with a shocking header. Patrick Roberts offside there, but he was never going to keep it in anyway. And that's why we're not starting McLean. He's been, he's been pissed for us. I mean, I thought he would come to the Scottish League. I thought he would do well, but it just hasn't been the case, has it?
Ryan Christie now picks up a yellow card. Four yellow cards for us so far, two for Dundee United. Wait, seven for Dun four for us. Yeah, five for yellow cards for us now. Holy shit. Hibernian just just got an equaliser there. Four minutes from time. John McGinn was one of our transfer targets for Celtic there. John McGinn getting a goal. Getting Hibernian back on level terms. And it may look like they will avoid defeat. But I do not think Dundee United are going to avoid defeat. Ten seconds to go. 3-1 down. Doesn't look good. Blair Spittle trying to make something happen. Intercepted by Bitten. The goal scorer will flood now. Back at the Spittle. Spittle plays through Toshney. And that's all we've got time for. There you go. 3-1, the final whistle, and it is a good opening game of the season for us. We've come out winners at home, three goals scored. Alright, the clean sheet would have been nice, we didn't get it. But I think we can be happy with how this game has went. So, uh, well done lads. That was a good win for us. And then you see 22 shots to their four, complete domination. And um, now we're moving on to the Rangers game. But before we do that, we have to take care of our move here. Max Ashmore. Oh, fuck it. I don't want to speak to him. Blah, blah, blah. Yes. So he's going out on loan. And now let's see what emails we've got. So yeah, Celtic hammered on the United. Blah, blah, blah. Player of the match near Bitten with an 8.3 rating and one goal. Patrick Roberts is going to be out for three to eight days. Which is never good. Um, blah blah blah. Dembele didn't put in the sort of. Uh, it's not time to spend worrying about. I mean, he's allowed one bad game. Let's be honest. He normally scores about ten goals a game for us. So, yes, he was the best player on the pitch. Blah blah blah. There they go, Max Ashmore has been loaned out. And then you see there's a roundup of the games that happened today. So Celtic 3 1 winners against Dundee United. Patrick Fissel continuing off their good season from where they left last season with a 2 0 win over Hamilton. Hamilton lost two of their best players. So um, expecting them to struggle this year. Kamarnik, one of the favourites for the drop, lost 3 0 at home to St Johnson. Terrible result for them. And Mullerwell were pegged back late by a newly promoted Hibernian and that ended at 1-1 both teams getting a point from that one Scott Moore hold on what's this I have blah 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 definitely uh, Dylan McHugh is this a guy that we want to be looking at Who knows, potentially maybe this guy could come here in the future. Hibs have got a few good young players that I wouldn't mind signing. Dylan McHugh is one of them. John McGinn, Scott Cummins. Well, we did try and get Scott Cummins and uh, apparently he's not a Jairs fan. <laughs> he doesn't like the Jairs. He definitely wants no piece of the Jairs, so he may not be the player for us. We've got Lewis Moult, though. I'm happy with that signing. Cost us a lot more than I'd like to have paid, but we got him, so hopefully he's good for us. Oh, come on, why against the Rangers game that showed me all this shape? Brighton, oh, it's just Brighton have made an offer of 925 plus future incentives for Callum McGregor, and uh, we've rejected that, so Callum McGregor will be staying with us, it looks like. Celtic are announced 41, oh, nearly 42,000 season tickets sold, which is good. We we sold we sold more this season than we have last season, so happy with that. And Rangers have also sold slightly more this season than they did last season, so that's all good. And uh, Sunday now, here's the two games: Dundee at Dens Park hosting Rangers, and then Hearts taking on Aberdeen, which should be a tasty clash at Ten Castle. So. Let's get into the match. Sadly, Mateo Neal's still out. He's been injured for a while now, so can't wait to get him back. The sooner the better. But uh, these things can't be rushed, so we've got Quintongo playing right mid. He'll have to do it until Niels is available. We've got Heinemann who can come back in. Heinemann can come in for Jason Holt. 
Uh, Halliday, who has been playing all right, injured. Got Crawford, who's going to be out for like two months. That was really disappointing. Halliday's going to be out for about two weeks max. Um, got Emmanuel Abue. Do we start him? Wilson and Devlin have been pretty good as a centre back pairing. We've got Mackay. Probably this is the team we're going to go with. Um, don't really want to drop Jason Holt, but I've got to bring in. Um, maybe we'll bring in. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Um, oh, Kenny Muller, you've not been dead much, have you really? But he's King Kenny. You can't just. You know what I mean, can you drop King Kenny? Ah, you can, because he's been pish. <laughs> right, that's the team we're going to go with. Uh, Fodder and him, Tavernier, Devlin, Wilson, Wallace, Hyman, Rossiter, Quintongo, Cranker, Mackay, and uh, Moult. So, um, I was delighted to be able to get Hyman and uh, Niels on loan for another season. Definitely two of our key players. I do know we are going to struggle when we do lose them. I highly doubt we'll be able to get them both on an all loan next season, so, um, well, maybe we should try and spend this season looking for future players that could come in and take over from them. So, who do you think would be a good replace? I don't think, maybe not necessarily right mid. I mean, we do have a lot of players capable of playing that, but Hyman is very good at the, the centre defensive deep line playmaker position. I don't think we have a player in our team that is as good as him or really good in that position. So, we could sign someone to maybe replace him for next season. That should maybe be the target, and we should start looking out for them just now. And um, Alan Nelson from the Scotland on Sunday predicts this is going to be a tight affair, but he thinks Rangers will come out on top. Kevin Gomez will be a big miss for Dundee. Dundee's star man, Darren Odia, I think he's a former Celtic player. And Rangers key man is Jordan Rossa or so. Hi. Jason Holt was out today. Ah, oh, fuck, he didn't look sharp. Blah blah blah. Uh, basically, Dundee United kind of going with the exact same formation, although their defensive midfielders seem to be slightly more defensive than ours. So let's see, let's be passionate. It's first game of the season. Let's give the fans something to cheer for today. And there we go, Rangers opening game of the season at Dens Park. Dundee beat his last time out. Hopefully we can get revenge here. Let's have a quick look at the league table. Um, Dundee sitting in sixth. We're sitting in seventh. Where will we be though by the time the season finishes? That is the question. Oh look at that. St. Johnson actually top. I thought it was Celtic but they're not top St. Johnson. Johnson. Oh what the fuck. Four minutes, uh, 14 minutes in, and Lee Wallace just gave away a, it's like a penalty, if, if clearly feels it was a harsh decision. Fuck, I was trying to check league table there, I wasn't even paying attention. So that's very disappointing there, conceding the penalty early into the game. It looks like Dundee, I've got a chance to go 1-0 up here. Who is it going to, it's Ivan Ildo stepping forward. Oh, further than i guessed the right way, man, so fucking unlucky there. Ivan Ildo puts Dundee 3-0, eh, 3 up, fuck's sake, 1-0 up uh, here at Dens Park, opening game of the season, and that's not what we wanted, man, disappointing there, Lee Wallace definitely feels it was a harsh decision, and it may have been Cranker at Whitman, the corner kick, headed away, Rossiter picks up edge of the box, it's Heinemann, back to Tavernier, come on Tavernier, Tavi, to Michael Devlin, Devlin, out to Quintongo. Is he going to keep that in? Just about. Well, he just keeps it in though for a clearance away. <laughs> and now it's Stockley. The man signed on from Aberdeen. It's Stockley out to Whiten. Tavernier punts it away. Oh, looks like Lewis Moult's free here. He's beat the defenders. He's Oh, he jumps over the last man. Lewis Moult. Ah, oh, straight at the keeper. Unlucky there. Great stuff though from the new Rangers man there. Just... Walking through the defence, making jumping over sliding tackles and everything, but unfortunately couldn't direct his shot into the back of the net. Cranker with a corner into the hands of Gillespie. So definitely showing fight back here, the Rangers team. And this is what we need, a quick reply. 
would be great. Hopefully, even a goal for half time. It's first game of the season. I know it's early days, but you do not want to drop points, especially when you're a team that um, would like to try and mount a challenge for the league. Dropping points in the first game of the season is not the way to go about it. 35 minutes in, we'll have a quick look at the stats because there's not much highlights happening, is there? Looks like it's been an, an even enough game. I think we can definitely consider ourselves unlucky to be behind. Uh, going to be a corner kick again. Cranker whips it in just before half time. Quintongo, oh yes, goal, get in. It's Jay Quintongo, the man we signed in January there. He's maybe not had the greatest start to his Rangers career, but he has got a goal here in the opening game of the 2017-18 season. And that is just what we needed just before half time to get us back on level terms. And I'm delighted with that one. Um, let's be assertive here at half time. Unlucky boys. We have been unlucky. I think we'll just keep going the way we are. I mean, we're, we're playing all right. We're not doing too bad. We'll kick off the second half here and hopefully we can uh, get a goal and come away with the win. Aberdeen Hearts game obviously hasn't kicked off yet. Time's just tick it right. Time to make a substitution here because not a lot's happening since we got that equaliser and that even had a single highlight. So we've got to change something here. And who could come on? Jason Holt could be the man to come on and do something. Uh, Louis Moult on a 6.5 rating. Don't necessarily want to take him off. We could bring off uh, Nico Cranker. Okay, we're going to take off Crankart and Mackay, I think. So Mackay for Holt. No, yeah, Crankart for Holt and we'll bring on a... Uh, Michael O'Halloran in there for Barry Mackay. Make those two subs and we'll give it a wee chance, see what happens. See if they can uh, make a difference in this match. Lewis Moult there been caught offside and um fuck it. That might be the uh, maybe the last contribution t for him towards this game. We've got to got to do something. Got to try and grab a win. I think we'll throw on Faghorn for Louis Moult. Let's give let's give a team top to Faghorn. Uh, let's be let's be assertive. I have faith in you, get out there and make a difference. A lot of Rangers fans have no faith in Faghorn. I don't have much faith in him, but got to keep him sweet, man. <laughs> got to tell him what he wants to hear. Maybe if I tell him what he wants to hear, he'll, uh, he'll repay our faith in him with a goal, with a, a late winner. But it's not looking likely now. Fucking, let's go attacking. Wallace throws it to Rossiter. Rossiter whipped it into Faghorn. Oh, what a goal! Fucking Martin Faghorn with the goal there, third goal of the season, 88th minute, two minutes away from us dropping points here and the substitution Faghorn has, it must, I think he must have won it now, we'll just going to defensive here, but holy shit, Faghorn there coming on with a substitution there, getting the goal, lovely stuff, looks like he is going to be the match winner for us today, Wallace. Another opportunity, can we bury the match? It's, it's Faghorn, keeps it in near post. But to Wallace, plays it to Heinemann. Heinemann shot blocked, O'Halloran. Straight into the hands of Gillespie with 90 seconds to go. Punt it up. Head it down by Care to Leah. Up to Stockley. Stockley tried to play it out wide, but O'Halloran in there. Good interception. Rangers now coming away with it again. 
looks like that's going to be it. Another corner now, Jason Holt with time, ready to whip it in. It's headed away for Stockley. Six seconds to go, heads in one more time. It's coming away, McGowan's going to get it, but surely there's going to be no time left for a counter. And there's not, referee blows the full time whistle. And that's it, 2 1 at Dens Park. Good win for us, man. I'll be telling the team that. Definitely a good win indeed. A good win, boys. Well done. Delighted with that. Managing to snatch a win there right at the end. Faghorn saving the day for Angels. Proving that maybe he still does have a future here. Look at the attendance. Look at the attendance, man. So, uh, over 11,500 turn up at Dens Park to watch us smash them. Well, we didn't really smash them, but we came away with three points. And that's all that matters. Lee Wallace was the man of the match. Putting in an 8.0 rating. We've got the press conference. Um... Paul is a great manager, we're good friends, are we really, I don't know, I'm absolutely ec ecstatic, certainly made my half time team talk, um, yes that's what it was a joy to behold, and there you go, so a uh, good win for us there, in the next few days we've got draws for the Betfred Cup and the Challenge Cup, and uh, we'll just see what the Hearts Aberdeen score was before we end the first episode. But the Euro Cup third qualifying second leg coming up. Um, we're not going to play that, guys. I think we've got enough to come to. I think we'll get through to the next round. Same with Celtic against Spanish and Icos. So we'll come back, I think, for one of the next uh, European legs, which will be the playoffs. And we'll see whether we can get both old firm teams into the group stages of Europe. So you see, Hearts came out with a 1 0 win against Aberdeen. And with that said, we will now check the league table and just see where things are. That Ryan Gold there made his debut for Aberdeen. In the league, didn't do too well. So we'll have a quick look at where we are before we end the episode. Ladbrokes Premier certainly you can see you're currently sitting in fourth place with Rangers after one game. 2 1 win. Celtic currently sitting in second. And uh, there's St Johnston top of the league with a 3 0 win. They're sitting on three points. So. Both teams off to a 100% start, which is great, and um, hopefully we can keep more of the same. Um, I'll have a quick look at the next schedule. Got come on, we've got that team, this uh, whoever the, wherever the fuck they're from. We're not going to play that, and we're not going to play the come on game. Probably we'll be back for the either the old firm match against Celtic or. Uh, if we get a big team in the playoffs, we'll come back for that. But that will probably happen after the Celtic match. So, let's go do it, guys, for this episode. A pretty long one. But anyway, it is what it is. Start the season. I had to at least uh, play both games, see how the teams got off, got on. And all in all, I think it was a good Celtic, obviously. Comfortable winner for Dundee United. And uh, Rangers getting a goal late on against a solid Dundee team. So, it may not have been easy for us, but we did get two wins, which is what I really wanted. So, um... That's going to do it guys, will there be any new signings by the next time we come back? Who knows, there might be, let me know down below what you thought of the episode and do you think that Rangers or Celtic need any new signings? Is there any weak areas of the team that you think could be exposed? And let me know who you would like to see both clubs or either club or whoever, well, I don't know if you're a fan of, it doesn't matter, any club you want to see, Rangers or Celtic, doesn't matter who would you like to see join them, let me know down below and I'll see if I can make it happen. But until next time guys, Boots on Scotland ain't he? It's been a long one, but hopefully it's been decent and you've enjoyed it. Until next time, peace.